Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and I'm here today with another hand for PokerNews.com. You all again wanted to discuss short stacked poker, so here we are. We're going to discuss facing an all-in from an 18 big blind stack in a $1,000 buy-in World Series poker event. Everyone folds to the player on the button. Who goes all-in? 18 big blinds. What do you think this player's range is? Well, I'm not exactly sure what the opponent's strategy is. Let's pull up Equilab, though, and um, see how we fare. Let's assume our opponent's jamming pretty wide. They don't use a good strategy of limping or min lim limping, shoving, or folding. Let's presume they just jam all in with all the hands they think are pretty good. 18 big blinds. Let's assume our opponent does something like this. And we have a sign offsuit. Against this range, you see we have 51% equity. Slightly ahead, right? So that's great. Easy call. Actually, it's not quite an easy call because we have to worry about the player yet to act behind us. So in this scenario, if that is our opponent's range, our opponent actually is using a strategy like this, which I don't think is so absurd for a lot of people who don't necessarily know what they're doing. Um, this is a close spot where I would fold. Why would I fold if I have 51%? Well, I fold because the opponent, well, for, I want to have an edge in this tournament, right? I presume I play well. And if you have an edge, you should be turning down slightly profitable spots. And right here, 51% is about as slightly profitable as you can get. Obviously, there is some money in the pot, but also I have to worry about the player behind me who will wake up with a good hand 5 or 6% of the time and ruin my day. Huh. So in this scenario, I would fold. However, you'll find what a lot of players do is they look at a sho shove fold chart and then they min-raise the best hands. So instead of shoving the best hands, now they min-raise the best hands and shove with a range like this, which is also a bit of a mistake. You see now we have 56% equity. 56% is a lot. Did I just read this wrong? I only have 49%. No, I have 51, okay. 56% um, equity whenever our opponent is not shoving the best hands is huge 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 if you turn down this 56 percent equity situation you are giving up a ton of equity so what our opponents probably want to do in this spot is they want to not shove the best hands they do want to min raise them or they want to limp them then they also want to limp some stuff that flops decently well and they want to limp some hands that um you know that are on the cusp of playability so hands like these perhaps want to get limped maybe they want to limp um Maybe like nines and king queen suited and ace ten suited. Maybe they want to limp bad ace x, although shoving ace x is fine. Maybe they want to limp ace x suited. I think that's actually reasonable. Let's assume they're doing something like this. We still have lots of equity. Easy call, right? Let's say our opponents don't shove the ace x, and now they're just shoving. Let's take out some of these as well. Let's presume they're shoving stuff like this. As you see, still okay. What it amounts to is that pretty much no matter how you configure this range, unless your opponent is using exactly a shove fold strategy, which I already told you is a mistake because you don't get to play lots of hands that are on the cusp of playability, and you just lose a lot whenever you are shoving with like the ace-x type hands, you need to call off with this ace-nine. And if you think about it, it makes logical sense, right? Think about which hands ace-9 dominates and which hands are dominated by ace-9. In this scenario, if our opponent's doing something like this, notice we dominate most of the aces, at least some of the aces. We're flipping against the pairs, and we're ahead of these hands here. So we're ahead of the majority of the time. Let's say our opponent doesn't shove ace-jack. I'll, I'll show you a strategy a lot of people do that is particularly terrible. They will just jam stuff like, stuff like this. If our opponent's using a strategy like this, well, now how does ace-9 fare? I mean, this is clearly looks like I'm trying to rig it to make it the best it could possibly be. Uh, let's, let's say our opponent do stuff like this. Well, now notice I dominate everything. And I actually do think this is what a lot of people do. They make this pretty egregious error of just jamming those hands. And you see here, ace-9 has a whopping 60% equity. So in this scenario, you really, it's, it's not as easy as pulling up a shove fold chart, seeing what that says your opponent should shove with for 18 big blinds and then seeing what you should call with. That is not gonna work out for you. 
Instead, you have to figure out what your opponent is shoving with. And this is part of the skill of playing short stack poker is what strategy is my opponent using? And you can figure that out by asking yourself, is our opponent min raising a lot? Are they limping a lot? Are they just open jamming or folding everything? Have they been really tight? Have they been really loose? Right? All of these things come into play. And for the most part, I'm really just not doing a whole lot of open jamming at all for 18 big blind stacks when I am playing in relatively soft World Series events, unless I know the players yet to act are really, really tight for all the chips. Some people will be really tight when all the money goes in, but we'll see every single flop for a min raise, right? You'd rather not see a flop, so maybe jamming is better. That said, most of the time when you find a tight player, they're tight across the board. If you min raise, they're just gonna fold a lot. So say we did have a hand like King Two or King King Eight offsuit, right? It's a fine hand to min raise. Min raise it, if you get jammed on, you fold. Easy. Same thing with King Two offsuit. Same thing with Ace Four offsuit. Same thing with um, you know, like seven six suited. All these hands are hands that are at least considerations to shove when there's an anti in play, but very often should not be shoved, especially if you as the raiser, can figure out what your opponents are going to do incorrectly. Again, if you are just looking at a push fold chart and following it, you are lighting your money on fire every single time you play poker, especially when you have more than eight or nine or ten big blinds. Um, we could talk about short stack poker for a while. I discuss it thoroughly at pokercoaching.com. Go there, go through the homework challenges, and you'll see many, many more thoughts on short stack poker. Anyway, right here, the way this works is ace nine is either break even or way ahead, one of the two, right? We saw, we went through all the math, it's either 51% or it's up to 60%, depending on which strategy our opponent's using. If we average those numbers, let's just pretend like our opponent uses all the various strategies across the board equally, we're probably like 55%. So are we willing to have 55% equity in this pot? And the answer is yes. We are happy to get our money in as a favorite. Don't be afraid of getting your money in as a favorite. I know a lot of people, they don't wanna be flipping. They think, oh, I don't wanna be flipping, but 55% with a little bit of money in the pot is great. Obviously, you do need to discount. I need to call a little bit tighter because we have a player yet to act who will wake up with a nut hand every once in a while. But still, this is going to be a call in virtually all scenarios, unless the opponent... I'll show you the one time you can fold. Um, let's see. If the opponent is jamming with like only something like this, only the best hands, which almost no one does, because like why would you just want to open jam aces for 18 big blinds? You're never getting called, right? Um... In that scenario, we're actually way behind. So if your opponent's just a super duper nit and doesn't play any of the other hands or min raises all of them and only jams the best hands, then we can maybe fold. But you don't find those players very often. So anyway, easy call. We're against ace four, which is great. One of those hands we really wanted to be against. And he gets there, which is fine. A lot of people think, oh no, I made a mistake. I lost a big pot. But no, we got our money in great. And this is where you print your equity. We printed equity here. We didn't collect it. You're not always going to collect the equity, and that is okay. So anyway, we lost the hand, and we move on with our lives with our um, 23 big blind remaining stack, and now we get to play shallow stack, and that is fine because we have studied it away from the table. So that's what we get for today. I hope you enjoyed this hand for PokerNews.com. If you did, let them know on Twitter, at PokerNews. You can also let me know on Twitter, at Jonathan Little. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Poker is not bingo. Don't forget that.